MashaAllah, nice to share this um, space with you. Um, full disclosure, I just wanted to begin with a uh, clarification about my education. Of course, I have been studying for much of my most of my Muslim life. And um, at Qadrin University, MashaAllah, I did have the pleasure to study there. Uh, but uh, I still haven't completed the Quran, but inshallah, I hope to one day. You know, but mashallah, I've blessed, been blessed to, to memorize quite a bit of it. Um, and uh, I completed the Kuliya of Sharia, uh, although I did take classes in the traditional school as well, right? And so, I, as being a Westerner, sort of, they gave us a break, right? You know, so and when I was there, there was some Russian student from Moscow as well who was studying. And the uh, and the Karwiyin, the traditional school. Um, but Alhamdulillah, it's uh, great to be here tonight and to um, see a lot of you know old friends, people I've been seeing for a while. Inshallah, of course, begin by thanking thanking the start of the Rashid for the invitation to come and speak here tonight as well. Um, he mentioned to me that uh, he wanted me to speak for about twenty minutes, but I'm afraid that I might go a little bit overboard um, because um, I want to also speak from the heart as well. Um, and, um, mashallah, is also Mr. Ahmed James, we call Baraka Blue. Mashallah, as I mentioned before, that you know, we actually were classmates at one point um, at the GTU. And, um, and, then, and then he didn't ask me to say this, but if there's any reason to buy his book, because he has books, a new book that he's trying to sell. So, you know, Inshallah, and um, if there's any reason to buy his book, it's because of that poem he just read about from Imam Sahib Sal Sal Sultan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mercy. I knew Imam Sahib, and he was one of the most gentle souls, um, very humble person, a beautiful brother. Right? And, and actually, I had multiple, many exchanges with him uh, via text prior to his passing. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but some mercy, and I say, be kind to his wife as well. <clears throat> We're here tonight, of course, because we are celebrating, commemorating an important, a pivotal event in the life of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wa salam, Sayyidu Kawunayn wa Thakarayn, the master of the two planes of existence, and the two weighty creatures, the jinn and men, the jinn bil ins. The Prophet say you to Kohnain that he was, of course, the master of Alam al Ghayb wa Shahaba, the the realm of the seen and the unseen, al Murk wa Malak wa Malakut. And the Isra Mi'raj, as we know, was that miraculous event when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited him to his kingdom and to witness the kingdom. Ibrahim alayhi salatu we know that on one occasion he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him how he gave life back to the dead. And Allah showed him in order to comfort his heart to remove any doubt from him about it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he showed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how the entire universe works, the workings of this, this universe. And often we forget that there is an unseen realm. And it really, what really matters is what happens in that unseen realm. We know that the Messenger alayhi salatu salam, prior to this great event, this, this journey from al Masjid al Haram ila al Masjid al Aqsa, as the Quran says, Subhanallah, the Asra bi Adihi Layla min al Masjid al Haram ila al Masjid al Aqsa, the Divarak na Hawla, who is Ruya, who is Ayatina, in the Hu was Sabir al Nasir. Glory be to him who took his servant by night from the Masjid al Haram ila al Masjid al Aqsa. That masjid or that place of worship which has been abounded with blessings in order that we show him from our signs and what great signs he had been shown in that night. Alayhi salatu salam. But this is also a story of love, as of course the Sadat Abdul Rashid 
highlights this. This is about love. I mean, what does love look like? We know true love, you know, there's, there are ups and downs. There's makrah you know, and mansha, there's moments of, of great joy and celebration. And sometimes there's moments of struggle and displeasure. And we are asked to bear patiently in those moments of displeasure. Um, sometimes we, we celebrate through giving gifts to our beloveds to prove our love to them. And what was preceded by the Isra Mi'raj was 10 years of great struggle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam to deliver a message to his people. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Purify God's house. That's what my job is. I have not come here to take away your status and your power and your position. I'm coming here to tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with seeing the worship of other things along with him. And he wants his house to be purified. And that's all he was asking them to do. Something very simple, to be totally honest. But they didn't believe. They said, no, he has to be up to something else. It can't be true that that's all he wants. He has to be trying to be, he has to be trying to set him up, himself up to become the next king or the ruler or the leader of this, of this peninsula. But that's all he wanted at the end of the day, proven by the Fatih of Mecca. And we know that three years prior to the Isra Mi'raj, there was a, an embargo. There was a hisar, and the, 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 the Muslims, they were almost starved to death. And at the end of those three years, the Prophet he experienced great sadness. And we know that in the books of Sirah, it said that this is called the year of sad, sadness, Amr Khuzn. And, 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 and contrary to popular understanding, or at least according to Shaykh Ramadan, Muhammad Sayyid Ramadan of Bulti, he said the reason why this year is called the, the year of sadness is not because he lost his wife, Khadija, alayhi salam. Because it's, 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 you know, just by the way, that's what you should used to say, alayhi salam. That's what, actually what they, people used to say very long ago, after every time someone died. But not only because he lost his wife, and he lost his uncle, Abu Tara, Rajullah I'm mean, sorry, that of course was Sunnis. Um, even though, of course, this khilaf about the question of the fate of Abu Talib, of course, the Shia said he died a Muslim, and the Muslim, they say he did not die a Muslim. Uh, Ibn, Ibn Hisham in the Sirah gives the impression that perhaps he died a Muslim to be in Sulli Amsha. Allah knows best of his fate. But at any rate, you know, it's, we be Sunnis, we're Orthodox, right? But Abu Talib, we know, was kind to the Messenger of so that's what's not. But uh, the point being that Muhammad Sa'id Ramadan al Bulti, he says that it was called the, the year of, of sadness because that was the year wherein the Prophet ﷺ, he found the greatest opposition. And he couldn't find an ear open to his message anymore. The Quran says, We know that it saddens you to hear what they say. But he said that it's not you that they reject. They reject the signs of God. We know that it saddens you. But what is interesting is after this, we know he goes to Ta'if and he's looking for, after the Hisar is over, he goes to Ta'if, he's rejected by the people of Ta'if, and then eventually he's pelted and finds his way to a place where he sits down and he makes that special prayer that we all know, the very beautiful prayer, perhaps the most beautiful prayer of the Sirah. Allahumma inni ashku ilayka ta'fa quwati wa qilla tahillati wa hawani ala nas O Allah, I complain to you the weakness of my strength, the ineffectiveness of my strategy, and my debasement in the eyes of the people. Ya arham ar-rahimi anta rabbi mustata'rim wa anta rabbi O all merciful of those who show mercy, you are the Lord of the weak, and you are my Lord. And we know the rest of the, the prayer. But what is interesting about this is that 
outside of the fact that towards the end of the prayer he says that if these things that are happening to me are not a sign of your anger and your wrath upon me, do what you may with me. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Of course, I, I, I would want things to be easy, but do what you may with me. And what is interesting is that when we reflect upon what has happened recently in Turkey and Syria, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant relief to the people, the Muslims and others who have been tried in that, in that area, in those, that part of the world, is that when you see the videos of survivors, and you see the celebration, people are not blaming God. They're not, they're, they're Allah, but they're not rejecting Allah, despite everything. As if that they themselves have heard the lessons enough as well. If this is not a sign of your wrath, as long as you're not angry with me, I don't, I'm not concerned. It doesn't bother me that you do this. But what's interesting is that when the Prophet decides to head back to Mecca, alayhi salatu salam, he eventually he reaches a place called Nakhla, and he and Zayd ibn Hadith, they pray. And as he's, he's reciting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends past them a group of the jinn. And then later on, he tells the Prophet something about what happened. Say, it's been revealed to me that a delegation of the jinn, that they listened to the Quran and they said, this is a, a marvelous recitation. This is a marvelous book. It guides to the straight path. We believe in it. And so we will never ascribe any partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Surah Al-Qaf, when it's Saraf Nairik and Nafara min al-Jinni, yastami'un al-Qur'ana, falamma hataruhu qalu ansitu. And reflect upon when we turn in your direction, they have a delegation of the jinn. And they were listening to the Qur'an, and once they came to it, they said, they said to one another, be silent and listen. And then once he was finished, they returned to their people rewarding. There's a book that has been revealed after Musa affirming what came before it, etc. It guides to the truth and to a straight path. At any rate, the point being that it's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in preparation for the Isra Mi'raj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is already sending the message to the Messenger alayhi salatu salam. Even though, or despite the fact that those in the material realm are rejecting you, then those in the spiritual realm, they have received you, they have accepted you. So first sign of consolation that the Prophet Sallallahu receives. He didn't lose faith. He, he was committed to his mission. And then he goes back. He makes his way to Mecca. He spent the night in the house of his cousin, Umhara. And then the angel comes to him that night. And then that night, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala takes him to Masjid Al-Qasab. He leads the, the Anbiya in prayer. The angel Jibreel shows him the Mi'raj. And the Prophet said, there's nothing more beautiful that I have ever seen than the Mi'raj. And it is the, to the Mi'raj that every single person when he or she dies is fixated on. That your eyes, when people die, their eyes become fixated in a certain direction. What are they looking at? They're looking at the Mi'raj. And then he takes them up. And when he arrives, he sees a man who's observing something. Something's being shown to him. And what is being shown to him are his people as he, they pass and transition out of this realm. And then when one of them 
dies a kafir, that man says, Ruhun Khabitha Kharajat bin Jasad al Khabith, a foul soul that came out of a foul, foul body. And when someone died, a believer, he would say, Ruhun Tayyiba Kharajat bin Jasad al Tayyib, a good soul that came out of a good body. And so the Prophet asked Jibreel alayhi salam, he said, Well, who is this? He said, Hada Abu Adam alayhi salam. This is your father Adam. He's presented with the, or shown his progeny. And he makes comment about them. He expresses his discontent with those who reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once again, it's re he says, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad so That's his message. He also eventually makes his way to what's called Bab al Hafala, the gate of the guardians. And at the gate of the guardians is an angel, his name is Ismail. And Ismail, he turns to Jibreel and says, Jibreel, who is this? And then Jibreel says, Hada Muhammad. And then Ismail responds, Awaqa Bu'ith, say, has he already been sent? Because all the angels are waiting to hear news of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, Khatim al-Anbiya wal Mursaleen. And in every the heaven he goes into, the, every angel they're asking him, has, has he already been sent? Has he already been sent? The angels are greeting him. Everybody's happy. They're smiling. And, you know, oh, welcome. And then he passes by one angel. And the angel, he greets him, but he's not smiling. He's frowning. And the prophet felt that was strange. He's like, everyone else is happy. He goes to Jibreel and said, well, who's that? He says, uh, oh, that's this Matic. Matic is the the treasurer is the, the keeper of Jahannam, of the hellfire. And he said, if he were to smile, he would have smiled at you, but he didn't smile at anyone. He said, you're, more, you're no more, more worthy of smile, being smiled at but you. I mean, this, this, is, this is smiling, this is how he is. So then he takes him to the second heaven. In the second heaven, he meets Asa ibn Maryam and Yahya ibn Zakariyah once again. In the third heaven, he meets Yusuf alayhi salam. In the fourth heaven, he meets the Prophet Idris alayhi salam. And he continues, he goes to the next heaven, he meets Harun, Aaron, the brother of Musa alayhi salam. And then he meets Musa in the sixth heaven. And then the seventh heaven, he meets Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then eventually, Jibreel, he tells him, there's a point that we have reached and only you can go. I can't go that, to that point. And this point is the, the extreme limit of the universe. And in that point, in that place, there is a great tree called Siziratul Muntaha, the low tree of the highest point. And the Prophet Sallallahu he enters into, into that, that area. And in some of the narrations they say that it was as if thousands of golden butterflies appear, they scat. And then eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to speak to him. <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him into his kingdom, and then he leads him and he speaks to him, shows him the dominions of the heaven and the heavens and the earth, and then he sends them back with a gift. And that gift was a gift of 50 prayers, at least to start. Khamsin. And we know the story it goes down, and Musa said, Oh, too many. They won't be able to do that many. Ask him to give you, a, to lighten your burden. And he goes back, and Allah, oh, okay, 40. And he goes back, and says, Oh, too many. No, okay, 30. Okay, 20, until eventually he makes it to five. This five were equivalent to 50. And then the Prophet of course, he's too afraid to or too ashamed to return to Allah after Musa says, it's not, it's too much. They won't be able to handle even five. I have experienced in this with my own people. Right? And so, of course, he returns. But fundamental point is this, final lesson I would say is that this is all after everything that he had gone through, the Messenger of Islam. We know that he 
started his life. He never knew his father. He only knew his mother for about a year. And he goes into the care of his grandfather and he loses his grandfather not very long after that. Then, of course, into the care of Abu Talib. But in his life, you know, later on, in, of all of his children, all of them die, except, except for one of them, Fatima, Zahra, alayhi salam. And we pray in every single raka'ah prayer. We say, Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeen, sirat al-ladina anamta alihim, ghayri al-mantubi alihim al-dhaleen. God is through the straight path, the path of those who have received your favor, of you upon which you have bestowed your favor. Who are those people? They are the, the prophets, the anbiya, the uliya, the salihin, the siddiqin, as the Quran says. That's what these people, and fundamentally what we're asking Allah for is to make us like them. And in, in other words, it's, it's as if we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to test us, but that if he does test us, that he allow our reactions to be similar to their reactions. In other words, we are expected to receive hardship in our lives, moments of displeasure. The Prophet said, Ashatu nasi anbiya the, the, the people with the hardest tribulations, the hardest tests are the prophets. And then those who are next to them in likeness and those who are next to them in likeness. So we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us like them. When we look at the stories of the prophets in the Quran, we don't see the, 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 the moments of, of joy, the moments of, of pleasure and luxury. We actually have to see the opposite. I Adam alayhi salam was tried by his sons. Nuh alayhi salam is tried by his son and his wife. Lut alayhi salam, his wife, rejects faith in him. Yaqub is tried by his children. Yusuf alayhi salam, his brothers. Right? Challenges, challenge after challenge. That's what would be fine. And so it is not a sign of Allah's hatred to us if we find ourselves in tribulation at times. Especially if we are not responsible for placing ourselves in those situations. Sometimes we can place a burden on ourselves greater than we can bear. We can do it to ourselves. And when we do it to ourselves, we make bad decisions. And of course, we can't blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes things just come our way. And when those things come our, come our way, that's usually a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test us. Right? It is not a sign of love necessarily that you get all that you want. It is not a sign of hatred that you don't get everything that you want, that you, that you experience some struggle as part of life. But this is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's treatment of his beloved. This is the way that he treats his beloved. He will, as, as some would say that the munafiq, the hypocrite, Allah he answers their prayers right away. The believer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he lets them continue to pray because he loves, he loves to listen to the, 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 the pleas of the believers, the pleas, pleas of his friends. At any rate, again, I apologize for going for so long, you know, but I, I just wanted to take an opportunity to, to just speak from the heart and, and reflect upon, you know, things that, you know, life is real, death is real. All of us want to leave this world as part of life. It's a, it's not a very attractive or pleasing fact to reflect upon. But all of us are going to transition. We were not created for this world. We were created for the next world. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allow for us to leave this world upon Iman, that we live upon Islam, and we ask him as well that he bless and reward those who have left this world already, and re re reunite all of us, inshallah, in Jannah, in the company of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam.
وصلى صلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وسبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المسلمين الحمد لله رب العالمين